Hi. No, I haven't gone communist. This is just uh, how I keep my camera covered on my phone since I tweet to Donald Trump. You can't be too careful in today's national security establishment type society. I just wanted to make a couple of general statements. Um, find out what that reflection is that is on the screen. Where is that shine coming from? Okay, it's gone, mostly. I wanted to make some comments about what's going on in the world these days. What is this shirt I'm wearing? I found it on the pillow, and I just threw it on this morning. Uh, I don't endorse whatever this says, and usually I can read backward, but I'm not bothering now. Norfolk. What's wrong with Norfolk? Uh, hey. So, I heard that my friend Sarah, who works at NASA as a PAO, had her window broken by the man who was fixing the roof, who also happens to be the landlord. Um, I advise Sarah to try to be nice, maybe even ply the man with a gift the next time she needs him to do something, and he appears to be taking so long. Very un-American, right? The American way would be to get in the guy's face and get angry, right? Um, and call the authorities. Well, I did say call the authorities, but that would be after you try to understand the person, as annoying as he or she may be to talk to the person, as difficult as that may turn out, and to be judicious, patient, kind, compassionate, understanding, and persuasive. Um, believe me, I can have that American knee-jerk reaction that says, this isn't right, I'm gonna fight. But in Korea, a lot of my own natural proclivities were justified, and so I learned them better by observing how Koreans deal with one another which can be very difficult because Koreans are natural resistors, natural fighters, um, and naturally bound up with a system of assuagement because in an ageist society, you learn in near infancy that you have to cotton to other people who are days, weeks, and months older than you. And so the whole society knows how to kiss ass basically. Um, I used to joke that that's why they have such a huge problem or society smoothed out by prostitution. It's a, it's a financial and cultural wedge uh, holding up a country. Um, and then interpersonally, people just buy things to one another. They whine to one another. They they kiss up to one another, they're sweet to one another, which we could find despicable, but which works to a degree and keeps people from getting angry. Maybe almost too much. Because there's a lot of anger there. There's a lot of stress there. There's a lot of whining. It's one of the main reasons I can't go back to that country. Because I just can't listen to people who are talking like this almost all the time. Oh, we could, you know, why? You know, um, I just, I can't take it. And when I miss Korea, I just walk down the street in Koreatown and I'm reminded of how I can't go back there because I can't listen to that, right? It's called agyo or affectation. Um, one of my friends who is married to a Korean and very intelligent, has a PhD, makes six figures, is very good at getting along with people. He called the way that Korean people speak, mostly in Seoul, um, do you want to get slapped? And my girlfriend at the time was like, what do you mean? Why do you, why is it, why is our way of speaking in English called do you want to get slapped? And he explained, because when we are infants, we learn from our parents not to whine in America, but whining is a way of life there. So I'm not suggesting that my friend Sarah whine to her landlord, but what I am suggesting is before reporting the landlord, which is actually my go-to response also. Um, try being nice. Do what the Koreans do. Maybe even get the landlord a little gift. And Americans will bristle at this and say, what? Buy him something when you already pay him rent and he's supposed to do these things? 
I'll answer that with something my Buddhist monk teacher once told me when I was complaining about problems with my girlfriend. He said, there's an old expression, and it goes like this. You can be right, or you can be happy. Koreans, they carve a path down the middle of being right and being happy, and it usually involves a moderate amount of protest, but a little bit more assuagement. And that's why people go out to dinner with their boss. That's why you buy canned coffee for people like the guard, right, who watches over your apartment. That's why you bring gifts to your uh, girlfriend's parents or your fiance's parents. You know, people are constantly making another person say, oh my God, thank you. And then it's much harder for them to screw you. And it works. However, once you've tried that in America, I suggest also doing what Koreans do uh, in less personal circumstances, like when your neighbor's being noisy. You don't do the American thing and go knock on his door and either talk to him or fight with him. You just report him, which my first reaction to was, God, what a bunch of snitches and spineless people. But Asians do this, because I hear they do it in China too, because it saves face, right? And the person is then called on the carpet in front of the person to whom he has an obligation instead of having to argue with you to whom he has no obligation. If you want interpersonal neighborly obligation, move to Japan where everybody is raised to feel responsible for his or her decorum. So there'd be none of this shit that we have in America, especially in New York, and most especially on Long Island, where people talk loud on the train, and they fight, and they play their music loud, they put their feet on the seats, right? Long Islanders are far lower class than New Yorkers who ride the subway. And I'm including in that pronouncement Long Islanders who are rich and have professional jobs. Because Long Islanders have the most entitlement of anybody on the planet, more than people in Beverly Hills, okay? Because they have the highest taxes, they tend to have to be rich, and so the rich and the poor on Long Island just don't give a shit about anybody, right? If you want to avoid this completely, you go to Japan, or you go to Korea where it's a little bit less um, bred into the people to maintain decorum because Koreans talk infuriatingly loud um, and they fight publicly. But they still have more decorum than Americans and most Westerners, right? And many, many of them are very gentle. You know, their behavior indiscernible from Japanese behavior. But the Japanese take the cake. You will never find a quieter, more respectful group of people. They take their phones and shut them off when on public transport. They don't just talk quietly. They don't talk to someone else if there's any chance they could disturb somebody else. But anyway, in America, if this is what you do, now relying on something my good friend Bob Diefendorf once told me, another consummate gentleman and ultimately kind and compassionate, he once said to me, your boss did this and this and then did this and this? Oh, they lied. I said, oh, come on, Bob. That's not like you to say that. No, no. He said, because in business... There isn't a hair that you don't consider. There isn't an inch that you don't measure and keep clean if you want to make a profit. And so in business, when there's a mistake, it's negligence and lying. Because in business, you're there to make money. You're not there to make friends. So you either think of it or you don't care. So with a landlord, especially in America, once you've tried the Korean way or the Japanese way, once you try the Carl way of trying to be understanding and kind and you talk to this person, If now the landlord doesn't do what he's supposed to do or what she's supposed to do, you go straight to the authorities and do what Koreans do when you're a noisy neighbor. They just call the building manager and he comes knocking on your door. Because why exert yourself when you don't have any obligation to your neighbor except to be nice if you want to? And then the relationship becomes reciprocal. They slam the door, you slam the door. They talk loud at night, you talk loud at night. They clip clock with their heels at 2 a.m., which... I had every place I lived in Korea, no consideration for the neighbor. And it isn't because they're mean. They're also bred like the Japanese, to be considerate. But they're just more salt-of-the-earth people. They're louder. They're just naturally noisier, okay, generally speaking. 
So why deal with a neighbor who's like that? Because he knows you can be like that. They just, you just get a knock on the door from the building manager and he's like, your TV's too loud, right? And you think as an American, wow, no spine. Why didn't he come and talk to me? Well, Americans should know best because Americans can just say to hell with you when they want to because we don't have a philosophy. We don't have Meiji era self-respect or honor. We don't have Confucianism as they have in uh, Korea. We don't have fear of the government like they have in China, right? We can do what we want because I'm free. You know, I can carry a gun. You know, I can be publicly drunk and ugly. I can fight with people. I can put my feet on the seat, as I said. So in America, when the landlord's not doing what he's supposed to do, do as the Asians do. Don't bother with him. Talk to him through the authorities. Call the police, even though you know that's not the police's jurisdiction. That will embarrass your landlord, and that will make him want to do the right thing or burn down your apartment or kick you out. I'm not sure. Uh, Because there's a lot of revenge in America. Last democratic country to still have the death penalty. Um, Or call the housing uh, department of the government, right? Have them lean on the landlord. Um, In my final kind of screw you side, when I'm not being Buddhist, I think, why help the landlord by telling him what he's doing wrong? This is how I feel about the Long Island Railroad. Half the time I tweet to them or I go into customer service and I tell them how horrible and inconsiderate and loud and annoying and ignorant their service is and dangerous. But the other half, I just say, why help them? Why be their market research? Why be their quality control? So I tweet to the governor. I tweet to the senators. I tweet to the congressman. I tweet to the president. I tweet to a board which oversees the Long Island Railroad. And you can do this with your landlord. Won't fix the toilet, right? Won't fix the air conditioner. Won't fix the roof. Breaks your window in the case of my friend Sarah. Don't help him by telling him what he already knows and and having it weigh on his conscience. This is if you don't want to take the kind route. You call the police, even though you know the police don't have that jurisdiction. But when they come around and they lean on their gun and they, you know, they stand there with their arms crossed and they look at the landlord and they're like, what's going on here? Even if they can't serve a summons or arrest him, now he's going to feel like a jerk, the jerk that he is. And he might change. Right. Or again, because we're in America, he might do something out of revenge. So you have to take that into consideration. Or you call the building department, you call the landlords association, uh, the local landlord board uh, or the tenants association, or you call the housing department of the government and you let them pressure him into doing his job. Right. It's like um, you have a friend you don't like. You don't go yell at him. You tell his wife what he did. Now he's going to live in hell. (laughs) Have a great day, everybody. Try to be nice first, but then be clever. Remove yourself and sick the authorities on the person who's screwing you over.